Last year, when the show You first came out, I thought it was just gonna be another one of those, like, girl meets boy, Bart turns out to be a stalker serial killer guy, girl realizes just before it's too late and barely gets out alive type of things, cause, you know, there's like a million shows and movies like that. Now, what we got instead was this cheesy, albeit uncomfortably intimate look at how these kinds of guys think and why they see themselves as, like, an anti-hero or whatever. And now that season two of You has been out for about a week or so, I thought it was time to take a look and see just how much creepier this show could possibly get. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is a huge online community where you can learn real life skills taught by real people who actually use them in their careers. Now, I get a lot of questions from you guys, mostly questions like, why is your voice so annoying? But also, I get a lot of people asking me how to start editing their own videos or how to learn animation, how to learn motion graphics, that kind of stuff. Well, Skillshare is the place you want to go. One of the great things about Skillshare is how the classes are structured in a way that you can advance as quickly or slowly as you need to. You don't need to commit to a three hour class three days a week or whatever. When and how you learn is all up to you. Like this amazing class in character illustration from Gabriel Piccolo about how to draw like faces and bodies, clothes, hair, all that kind of stuff, which is something I'm really trying to work on because like all my characters have the exact same hairstyle. Yeah. Now get this, everyone who signs up using my link down below get two months unlimited access for free. And then it's just 10 bucks a month after that. And it's not just creative stuff, okay? They got business classes, finance classes, self-improvement classes, really anything. So if you're ready to start learning that skill you always wanted to, this is your chance. Click my link below, sign up and get started today. Okay, back to the show. So just a quick recap. This is our main character, Joe. Now, there's nothing really special about this guy. I mean, like most of us, you know, he reads books and steals a girl's underwear, murders her best friends, locks their boyfriends in a soundproof dungeon and pulls their teeth out. You know, just one of a thousand guys you can find on any dating app. Now, at the end of season one, Joe killed his girlfriend, Beck. But you gotta understand, it was all for her sake, all right? But just when it looks like he's gonna get away with it, there's one last meddling kid that gets in his way. Kent. I think we have some unfinished business to talk about. Now this is another one of Joe's ex-girlfriends, Candace, who's also supposed to be dead, but somehow survived and moved away to Italy, hence why Joe's making this face like he just found out why eating day-old Taco Bell is not a good idea. And then, short story shorter, Joe ends up running away to Los Angeles so he can start his life all over in the last place Candace would ever think to look. Love has taken me to dark places, but Los Angeles has got to be as dark as it gets. When you're running from someone who thinks they know you, the best place to hide is a city they think you hate. Because I do. It's the worst city in the world and the last place I want to be. And that's perfect. It's temporary. Regroup. Get some cash together. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, just hold on a second, Joe. You moved to LA to get some cash together? No roommates, no trust fund, not even a YouTube channel, and you're hoping to save money? Anyway, so Joe shows up at his new apartment building where he meets the building manager. <laughs> who, slight spoiler, is easily the best character in the entire season. But you'll just have to watch that for yourself. Welcome. I'm Delilah. Will Bettelheim. Nice to meet you. Your credit came back sparkling, Will. Oh, good. Good. But I looked you up. You're not on the socials, like, at all. Thought you might be some kind of freak. Oh yeah, just a little FYI, Joe changed his name to Will by kidnapping this guy and put him in another secret dungeon thing he built when he got to LA. You know, like you do. Anyway, so at some point later in time, Joe heads over to the biggest organic, non-GMO, every LA stereotype all wrapped into one supermarket called Anovrin. Now he's here to apply for a job so he can somehow magically pay rent, and wouldn't you know, he gets hired right on the spot to head up their failing bookstore section. I think I just felt my soul come back into my body. Can you start tomorrow? And so, with all the pieces falling into place, Joe's about to head home for the day, but you'll never guess what happens. Oh, no, 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 no. I know that music. I know what's going on here. But anyway, so while Joe's thinking of his next move on how to, like, have a chance meeting with this girl or whatever, things take a turn. I won't say hello. I'll accidentally bump into you. You'll never even know I was here. Excuse me? Do you think this peach looks like a butt? There is no wrong answer. It looks a little like a butt, yeah. Right? You know, this is one of those icebreaker pickup lines or whatever that really only works in like movies and TV shows. Like imagine if you were just standing there and some girl comes up to you like, do you think peaches look like butts? Anyway, so they get to talking and we come to find out that they actually have a little more in common than you might think. Will, I just started in the cafe. Me too. I, I, uh, I manage the kitchen. I do most of the buying for the store. I was just shopping for my dinner. Anyway, sorry, love. It's my name, I mean. No. Cool. 
Yeah, so if you thought this girl was weird before, well, not only did her parents name her Love, but she's kept that name this entire time, so interpret that how you will. Now, despite Joe being who he is, he doesn't really want to get too involved with her or anything, because the whole point of him coming to LA in the first place was to lay low and avoid Candace. So, starting something up with this new butt love girl or whatever, maybe not the best idea. No. Not biting. I'm not that guy anymore, and I don't think I ever will be again. I can't be. Love, you are not for me. But of course, wouldn't you know, Joe ends up changing his mind, because otherwise this show will be over pretty quick, you know what I'm saying? And so, for the purposes of spying on this girl, he does the unthinkable and finally gets on social media. <gasps> it's come to this. Get online to blend in, just long enough to get out before Candace finds me. Create a feed of my alleged life while life happens around me, but how would I know? Friend requested. And we all know what that means, right? Like, sure, Joe's just a mild-mannered nice guy who likes to read books and sneak in the girls' houses and pee in jars or whatever. But once he starts going down this road, I mean, eventually he's just gonna end up like all the rest of us. You know, subscribing to 15 different OnlyFans accounts and going on Twitter every day like, Well, it's 2020, hope I can finally die this year. Anyway, so he falls asleep in the park after making his profile and wakes up looking like this. I'm an idiot. Am I sunburned through this t-shirt? How is that a thing? Worth it. All worth it, love. And that's when we come to find out that love's social feed is actually just incredibly boring. Except for one small detail. Married. So after this, Joe goes home, a little disheartened because his hopes and dreams have been dashed away. But while Joe's just hanging out in his kitchen that night, wouldn't you know, Love shows up unannounced, like any good manic pixie girl would, to help him with a sunburn. Do you have a medical license? Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious, though. You, you didn't need to come all the way over here. I live right in the neighborhood. Is that salad dressing? No, it's apple cider vinegar. May I? And of course, they end up sharing a moment where she's putting some stuff on his face and probably thinking about butts, I assume. Now, because Joe doesn't really have any food in his apartment, Love gets an idea. Is that 99 cent ramen? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, Will, no. You're an Angelino now. I'm not. So you, you're missing out, okay? This city is a million cities. It's, I mean, we're going. We're going. Where exactly? As many places as we need to to convert you. Now at first this might seem like a cute romantic kind of sort of thing to do or whatever, but with LA traffic being how it is, I mean, it pretty much takes you all night just to go like a mile and a half and back, so good luck with that. Finally, they go back to Anavran, and here we get some very important information about what's going on with Love's marriage situation. Well, I have to tell you something, and I'm just gonna come out and say it. The uh, community garden that we walked by, I got married there. Three years ago. I'm sorry if I sent the wrong signal. No, he's I told dead. You you know, that's the thing about dating in your late 20s to 30s. Like, first off, your body one day just decides to give you a bedtime, like, Well, it's 11.25, I'm done. But also, the people you meet all kind of fit into, like, two categories. First, you got people who, you know, they got a little bit of baggage here and there, like, maybe they were cheated on, or maybe they dated someone who does the toilet paper like this. And then you got people who are just like, Oh boy, where do I even start? Anyway, so they get to talking, and the conversation's basically just like, My husband got sick and died last year. Well, my girlfriend was brutally murdered in an underground dungeon by some mysterious but very handsome fella. Well, gee whillikers, Joe, we're exactly the same. And just when it looks like everything's going all smooth or whatever, at the very end of the episode, we learn the truth about what Joe's really been doing. It wasn't easy for me to get here, to buy myself a little time, the slim chance at a new life. And then I saw you. It's delicate, the whole thing. That's right, turns out this whole time, Joe's been secretly stalking this girl since his first day in Los Angeles. His apartment, his job, like everything, is just so he could tapeworm his way into her life. Although I'm not really sure what the point of this whole fake out bait and switch thing was. Like, we're all supposed to actually believe that Joe's just gonna be a normal dude for 10 episodes. But anyway, so over the course of the rest of the show, things go all over the place. I mean, I was kind of worried that season 2 was just gonna be like a complete rehash of season 1, more or less. And I mean, it kind of is, but I'll say this. If you think that love girl's weird now, okay, but just wait till you get to the end.
Now, the show's only been out for about a week and a half or so, a week and a couple days, so I don't want to get too much into spoilers and all that just because I know a lot of people haven't seen the whole thing. I will say, though, kind of like I said in the video, I was kind of afraid they were going to just retread, like, the exact same plot points, which, to be fair, they kind of did, you right? Like, it starts out, and he meets this girl, tries to get her to fall in love with him, and then there's a kid who's going through some kind of problem, and so he's, he's trying to be this creepy dude trying to get the girl, but then he's also, like, a guy with a heart of gold trying to save this kid from an adult doing something bad. Like, it, it's really a lot of the same plot points kind of just again until like the very end when we find out you know the truth about love and what's going on with her but we don't get there until like episode maybe like eight or nine or whatever it is like with season one the big twist happened like right in the first episode where you know joe's kind of this creepy dude but like okay i get it he's a little bit creepy but then right at the end of episode one when he takes benji and throws him in the the dungeon or whatever then it's like oh Joe's one of these kind of dudes. But going into season two, like, we already know about Joe. We already know who he is and what he's done. So, like, that whole, like, oh my gosh, who is this guy? Like, that's all gone because it's like, we know Joe's like a total crazy dude. So, it's like, I was kind of hoping, like, with what I mentioned earlier in the video, if he had actually decided that he's just going to avoid Candace, he's going to lay low, like, for real, and then love comes in with her, like, you know, crazy girl powers, whatever, and tries to, like, figure out about him and seduce him and find out his secrets and then Joe in turn has to use his like psychopath serial killer powers to try and second and third guess what she's gonna do to avoid her you know and so like he has to use his powers to stay out of love I have a strong feeling we're gonna get season three out of this because like it's one of Netflix's most popular shows it's there's so many memes and everyone's talk about it online so like I would be shocked if it didn't at least get a third season and hopefully in that season they flip things around a bit because like I said I kind of hope they would in season two but then they didn't so we'll see anyway thanks for watching everybody don't forget to subscribe don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me follow my dog Charlie on Instagram follow me on Twitter let me know what was the favorite part of the video or what movie TV show I should do next or just say hi that's fine too and above all else everybody have a great day and I'll see you all next time.